this time, Danbury Fertilizer will present to Princess Kim a $50 check. And now, for that great big moment, will Kathy Clough please come to the to ask the Queen, the Princess, and their parents to remain on the stage for pictures for just a few moments. So before we start the rest of the variety show, if anyone wants to take pictures now, Classic 
car show the floor is so far and it's so hard. Walking at all the Good evening, I'm Dan Ratherby, somewhere else, and this is KRN News Update, 1989, and I'm here working for a living. The hours are lousy, but I only have to work one day a year. Now, here are some girls that work some more conventional hours. Get her working.
this time to reintroduce the 1988 Cornet Queen. We thought we lost her last year when she went away to college, but this just proves what we all, what we've known all along. Cornet's is a state of mind, and I'm pleased to present Leslie Neville singing Could Have Been So Beautiful. in the two years since this sign was erected. Close observation reveals that yes indeed, advertising does not cost, it pays, and the Danbury Review paid dearly. All the businesses listed on that sign have prospered, and the Danbury Review was not listed. Perhaps if they had advertised more, they'd still be with us today. Nonetheless, with every loss, there can be a gain. Already there is talk of a newspaper called the Danbury Preview. Perhaps it should be called the Danbury Freeview because it comes to all Danbury businesses that need to advertise. Excuse me. I think perhaps it should be called the Danbury Preview because it comes to all Danbury community residents free of charge. 
thus creating a more valuable market for businesses that need to advertise. Obviously, ag food knew the value of advertising, or they wouldn't have put up this new sign. Now, if Ron could just remember what it was he wanted to advertise for. As for the building that formerly housed the review office, it is now the home of the Kraft Nook, owned and operated by Julie Mullins and her sister, Virginia Hasbro. Here you can purchase anything from a handcrafted Raggedy Ann doll to a wooden toy barn. Still, other businesses, such as Russ's Furniture, have chosen to expand their services to the public. But what makes Russ's tanning booth unique is the fact that his patrons can depend on having a lifeguard on duty. <laughs> Commercial improvements do not necessarily have to be restricted to Main Street, as in the case with a very visible improvement to the Ron Sentience Farm. Ron is quoting it as have, is quoted as have having said that I never could have gotten started in farming without picking up a few good bargains at local farm auctions. The Sentience family has a rich tradition of auctioneering. And due to the fact that we needed an auctioneer for this evening's show, I thought it only appropriate that we call the master auctioneer himself, Wayne Sinchins, for some references. So why don't we do that now?
There was a boy from Arkansas who wouldn't listen to his ma when she told him that he should go to school. He'd sneak away in the afternoon, take a little walk, and pretty soon you'd find him at that local auction barn. He'd stand and listen carefully, then pretty soon he began to see how the auctioneer could talk so rapidly. He said, oh my, it's do or die, I've got to learn that auction cry, I gotta make my mark and be an auctioneer. Twenty-five out of fifty, another thirty, another thirty, will you give me thirty, make it thirty, bet one, another thirty, dollar, will you give me thirty, will you give me thirty, dollar, bid? Thirty, dollar, bid, now thirty-five, will you give me thirty-five, make it thirty-five, bid a thirty-five, who bid him at a thirty-five dollar bid? As time went on, he did his best, and all could see he didn't jest. He practiced calling bids both night and day. His pap would find him behind the barn, just working up and off the farm as he tries to imitate the auctioneer. Then his pap said, son, we just can't stand to have a mediocre man. Gotta sing that auction using our good name. I'll send you off to auction school, then you'll be nobody's fool. You can take your place among the best. Thirty-five out of bid, another forty, another forty. Will you give me forty? Make it forty, bid him on a forty dollar. Will you give me forty? Who give me forty dollar bid? Forty dollar bid, now forty-five. Would you give me forty-five? Make it forty-five, bid a forty-five. Who will bid him at a forty-five dollar bid? So from that boy who went to school, there grew a man who played it cool. He came back home, a full-fledged auctioneer. Then the people who came from miles around just to hear him make that rhythmic sound that filled their hearts with such a happy cheer. His fame was put out from shore to shore. He had all he could do and more. Had to buy a plane to get around. Now he's the tops in all the land. Let's call and give that man a hand. He's the best of all the auctioneers. Forty five dollar bid, another fifty, another fifty. Will you give me fifty? Make a fifty bid, one a fifty dollar. Will you give me fifty? Who bid a fifty dollar bill? Fifty dollar bill, now fifty five. Would you give me fifty five? Make a fifty five, bid a fifty five. I sold that horn for a fifty dollar bill. Hey, it all right, sir. Open the game. Let him know. Walk on, boys. Here we come on line number 29 in. What do you want to give for him? I'm a 25, give me 30 now. Five. Who could have buy now? 35 down. I'm now. 45 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 now. It is necessary to occasionally go on vacation. Some people like to go north for the summer fishing, while still others prefer to go south for the winter sunbathing, as was the case with Tooby Sentience and Pat Berry. <laughs> According to KRN sources, they sent back this picture of themselves sunbathing in Florida this winter. For those of you who want to know whose is whose, <laughs> just a <laughs> For those of you who want to know whose is whose, those same sources say Tootie has a descriptive tattoo high on her thigh. Could we get a close up of that, please? Yep, that's it. Born the boogie. While on the subject of butts, do you think these twins are getting tired of being the butt of the corn day jokes? <laughs> For those of you who don't think that that's enough butt jokes, film at 11. Back to vacations. Here's how another sentience, namely Pete, and his friend Matt Lacey spent a recent summer vacation. Down on 17 when a man with a blinking red light was on our tail. 
He said, you were doing 16 to 45, but I'm going to let you go this time. But if I catch you again, I'm going to slap you in the county jail. Well, so thank you, sir. You sure been nice. And you ain't going to have to tell us twice. We were southbound and down with the wind blowing in our faces. We kept on rolling pretty soon. The radio was kicking out a hag or two, and we was pulling into Houston, checking out all them places. I was feeling dry, and I said, I think we'll stop and get ourselves a drink. And old man says, yeah, we got time to kill. Kept on a drive until I seen this spot. I pulled into the parking lot of this place called the Cloud Nine Bar and Grill. I walked through the door. The place was jammed. The lights were low. They had a punk rock band and some orange haired feller singing about suicide. I said, Matt, this ain't our kind of place. He said, let's just have one around anyway. So against my better judgment, we walked on inside. Went up to the bar and we sit down. This fellow walks up and said, I'll buy this round. He sat down on the bar stool next to Matt. He walked like a girl, but he talked like a guy. He had lipstick on, mascara in his eye, and everybody in that place was just about like him. I said, Matt, this ain't our kind of bar. Let's just go on out and get back in the car, because it's going to be trouble. Ain't no sense in taking a chance. We was getting up, getting ready to leave, and somebody grabbed old Matt by the sleeve. He's a good looking girl, and she was asking my buddy to dance. I said, Matt, don't do it. There's something missing. There's fellers dancing. There's fellers kissing. There's a feller in high heel shoes wearing pantyhose. I said, partner, I just can't turn this down. You go over there and have one more round. I'll dance with the lady and we'll get on our way. So he walked away and left me alone. This funny looking fella kept coming on and he was making me mad at some of the things he said. And then he put his hand on my knee and said, if you don't get your paw off me, I'm gonna look at your nose around on the side of your head. He said, I love it when you get that fire in your eyes. Well, partner, try this on my size. And I had loaded on him. He went out like a lot. Everybody in that place must have been his friend. They all headed for me. I said, this is the end. Where I come from, we don't give up without a fight. They were screaming and yelling and scratching and clawing. I was punching and hitting and kicking and clawing. I was holding my own because I'd been in a scrap or two. Old Matt come running up from out of the blue and that gal he was with come running up to him proceeded to beat on me with a high heel shoe. I grabbed her by the hair to come off my hand. That beautiful girl was just a beautiful man and old Matt just got sick right there on the floor. He dropped that dude like a shot from a gun, speared his lipstick, made his makeup run, and me and old Matt started fighting our way to the door. We let out of there in that chair of lay, I put her to the floor and she stayed that way. We was going down the highway doing about 110. We was headed for home, we was getting near to the red light come on the rear view mirror and that same blame cop was pulling us over again. I'm sitting here in this county jail, had to call my daddy to go our bill and to learn me a lesson that I never will forget. I don't give up drinking, I give up bars and run around the country in super tough cars going back to where the women are women and the men are men. <laughs> That's why I'm 
keeps us watching these two. And it's so hard. So hard. Babysitting these guys. Days. 
So here to tell us more is Tom Vermeer and Sandy Orton. Just get our picture on the screen of the Cornation. Cornation. Irving got his picture on the cover. Never saw a picture of his mother. Joy sees some smiling faces on the screen of the Cornation. Rock and roll, Mama. Randy had a fire. He started as a liar and it burned till it hit the fan. Close the place down to help could be found. Judy gave him a hand. Pushed his head style, and he made a pile. And Ed said, I don't know. And Red couldn't answer, but Ed's painting better for the screen on the Cornation. Cornation. Where you got her picture on the cover. Never saw a picture of her brother. Smiling nephews, folks. Sorry about that. But teeth were glowing, and his legs were showing. And Judy said, I just don't know. Why some hearts be folding, and Jim need a hold in. And Belly's just going to flow. He's got all the friends that money can buy. You'll never have to be alone. Oh, what they're thinking. It just so happens that Danbury has two very active community churches, which are constantly offering you an opportunity to make an offering. The Catholic Church in the last year, under the leadership of Father Jim, has replaced the steps and railing of the rectory, the windows of the church, and removed the asbestos from the parish center. This has forced Father Jim, though, to create more innovative ways to solicit offerings. <laughs> As for the Methodist Church in town, they've got new siding, new carpet, and a new minister, the Reverend Morris Hurd, formerly by the Grove. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, one of the things that we can't offer to you tonight is the act Lugnut and the Chromies. It is rumored, yeah I know, it's rumored that the band broke up because one of its members is currently working nights for a living. But do not despair, for our beloved mayor, the Honorable Boss Hall, upon hearing of our dilemma, has volunteered to stand in and take their spot in the show. So with no further ado, may I present His Honor, Boss Hall.
Well, good news, folks. Lugnut and the Crowbees.
Ladies and gentlemen, we came here tonight for two reasons. The first one is to provide you with the very best car show possible, which you will see tomorrow from 1 to 3 o'clock in the city park. Oh, after all this embarrassment. Reason number two is to give you the best possible variety show. Because if we didn't make it here tonight, we wouldn't be taking care of business. $22,500 replaced our old ambulance. KRN sources report that over 14,000 of this has been paid toward the purchase through local donations. Keeping emergency equipment up to date is a top priority, especially to the elderly members of our community. In contrast, some of our volunteer organizations are strictly recreational, such as the Circle D Saddle Club, which recently constructed this new arena, a nice addition to our community, at a cost of $1,200. This, in turn, offered a one local citizen an opportunity to fulfill a childhood dream and open the Jean Berry Riding School. Jean chose this particular mount because she said she never saw a horse that couldn't be rode or a rider who couldn't be thrown. But it seems with all these extra horses in town, this show isn't the only place that gets a little deep. All scooping aside, volunteers can make a difference as evident in the fact that our Little League concession stand was able to raise a lot of money through the, first, through the use of volunteer help, and at the same time, our major and minor teams were first and second in their respective tri-county tournaments, and our peewees finished second and third in the county tournament. Notice in this picture, no team in the visitor's dugout. That's because Danbury, played Danbury in the semi-final round. Needless to say, Danbury wins any way you look at it. One often overlooked volunteer organization is the American Legion. But little did Bill Berry know that when he said, ready, aim, fire, that yes, indeed, this would be the year of the fire. A volunteer fireman answered the call to the Tom Cameron farm, the John Fick Farm, and the Gary Sentences, and the house that fell in a heap. But the most devastating fire in the community was the fire that closed Doc's, Doc's Lounge for six weeks. Anyone can plainly see the effect that it, anyone can plainly see the effects, but the impact was observed by examination of the traffic on Main Street. by the examination of Rogie's parking lot. But the real kicker was when a KRN reporter took this photo of Bud Triver raking his yard. <laughs> and now, for more about fire, with just a pinch of brimstone, 
It is time for church chat with your host, the church lady. Billions from his ministry. 
I see that Jimmy Swagger has willing women waiting on his every whim. Perhaps the ministry is a calling more suited to my abilities and desires, signed Kurt Sanchez. <laughs> well, Mr. Sanchez, isn't that special? Do you expect me to judge the farming professions on the basis of a few misfits? I don't know who gives you these crazy ideas. You're judging the ministry on the basis of a few people who have strayed from the straight and narrow path. I'm not going to judge your profession by them. And with that note, let's bring out our first guest, a visitor from the East. It says here that he is the all-knowing, all-seeing seer, soothsayer, and former scuba diver for Roto Ruger, the magnificent Cornhead. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. <laughs> well, anyone can get lucky one time. Let's try this again. Chops Berry, Ron Cornine, oh, and Stud McBride. Barry, Ron Cornine, and Stub McFride. Name three guys who can sit on their big A's, but only two that can drive them into the field. Let me see that! The difference between 
25 and 23. The difference between 25 and 23. That's how close Norm Smith came playing loud to have an inner sentence cleaning up Smitty Hog Barn. <laughs> I was truly skeptical, but I have become a believer in your great powers and abilities. Could you please share with us the secret of those powers on my show this evening? Well, since you've had your attitude adjustment, yes, I suppose I could. Uh, I prepared a little song. I noticed earlier that you play the guitar, so if you'd be so kind to accompany me, I, I would share that with your audience. Check my tuning first. And what key are we in? Uh, the key of G. Goes something like this. Brain surgery. 
I guess he's ready for four more years. They must have figured me better late than never. And while on the subject of brain surgery, Skip Sexton was selected to the Iowa Basketball Referees Hall of Fame this year. Congratulations, Skip. Let's give him a big hand. And now for a special report from our guest correspondent, here is the almost blues brother, Elwood. Doc and I went on TV last week to sing a song called the Corn Day Blues. And a lot of people have said they didn't know if it took a lot of guts or a lot of stupidity. They were sure of one thing, talent wasn't involved. <laughs> But I've had these Corn Day Blues for years now. And what we're, we've always tried to do during the show is emphasize how much Danbury as a community has going for it. And how we can accomplish anything we try to accomplish except perhaps singing in tune. One of our current community projects is the refurbishing of Dana Hall. Now I know there are some out there who think we could tear it down and rebuild new. But what they may not realize is that they're not just tearing down a building, they're tearing down history. And since the loss of our newspaper, there's not much history left. The profits from Corn Days are used for community improvement. And with a project as large as this, we decided not to charge at the gate on Sunday's activities because we didn't want to limit you to just a $2 admission. So, tomorrow when you go out to the park, you stop at that donation box. If you feel like you've got some of those corn day blues tonight, a good way to get rid of them is by breaking out the good old American green. And with that in mind, I present our final act, Working for a Living Corn Day Version.
I hope you don't complain. You see me in this tutu, I feel like a jerk. I won't do this again, cause I don't want to work. Working for a living. Working for a living. My name is Sandy, I'm a farmer's wife. When I married Bill, I married him for life. Money for a tractor, Bill said it's okay. But if I need a dress, the answer is no way. Working for a living, working for a living. If it weren't for K, there'd be no need for me. Now that I'm famous, one more thing to say. You heard of Walter Cronkite? Next year I want his pay. Working for a living. Working for a living. Working for a living. Living in a working. I'm taking what they're giving because I'm working for a living. Halloween 